This is the beautiful freshwater reservoir in Paraibuna in Brazil. I was living in Brazil in 2001 and this looked like a good place to spend the last four months of my stay. I camped close to the water for a few days, observing the place and unwinding from a visit to Sao Paulo only two hours away. 27 million people is too much company for me. There was nobody around. I explored the place and found more and more water. The reservoir is huge. The water was even drinkable. I skinny dipped endlessly. The village of Parebuna was a 45 minute hilly walk to the main road, then another 30 minutes by shuttle. I would go to town, stock up at the local fruit and veggie shop once a week, and the rest of the time I stayed here. I mean, why leave? I climbed up on hills to get a look at the size of the reservoir. It seemed to go on forever. A little piece of paradise, I thought. Just water, trees, hills, as far as one could see. It's hard to believe when you find something so nice, almost too good to be true. In fact, it was too good to be true. Within sight of my camp was a diesel ferry that took cars and trucks across the lake every hour or so. Weekends were noisy and smelly with exhaust and smokers, loud radios, so much for paradise. Cars full of people would come and hang around waiting for the ferry to take them to that ramp you see across the opposite side. I need to get away from this, I thought, but the brush was so thick I would need a machete to get through it. I spotted an island maybe 300 yards away with a small white beach at one end. That's where I want to be, on my own island, on my own beach. I could ask the ferry driver to drop me there, but how would I get back? I needed some kind of watercraft. A raft, that's it, I'll make a raft. I'll need some materials, there's nothing here. Hi, I'm Martin Adams and I'm going to show you how I made a raft that changed my life and could change yours. I went to the village and then by bus to a town, hired a guy to take me shopping in his pickup. I got 6 meters of 20 centimeter PVC pipe, which is like 20 feet of 8 inch. The end caps, plywood, traffic cones, a few tools, varnish, and then I got to work. I figured two pontoons, a small deck, and an oar, and that should do it. The deck would need curved feet to stay on the pipes, so I made six of them. It's upside down, I know, but this is how the curved feet of the deck will sit on the pipes when it's in the water. I screwed the deck on and it's ready for sanding and then varnish. I figured two coats of varnish would keep the water out. I hung the deck from a tree with a nylon string so it wouldn't so nothing would stick to it when it was drying. All I had to attach the deck to the pontoons was some nylon rope, so that's what I used. This is the maiden voyage. The island I want to get to is in the background. This had better work, I thought. Well, so far so good, it floats. Oh, doesn't that island look inviting? And the beach completely empty? Not for long, I'm on my way. All right, free at last. I'm out of here. As soon as the test voyage was over, I loaded my stuff on the raft and rode to my island. Yes. After exploring my end of the reservoir for a few weeks, I decided to turn the deck 90 degrees to make the raft wider and more stable. This made a profound difference. This simple change will later prove to be critical in the transformation of the raft into something more exciting. Life on the island was delicious. Instead of seeing the ferry each morning, I saw this. I explored more of the reservoir, looked at many islands. Mine turned out to be the best, of course. I took pictures from my raft. This is one of them. I found secluded bays, went snorkeling. Life was good. This is the backside of my island. There's nobody anywhere. On a weekend, a, motor mo a motorboat might go by then hours later might go by in the other direction. That was it. 
Standing up on my raft in the wind gave me an idea that it might be possible to convert it into a sailboat. So I scrounged some wood scraps and got started. Let's see, a sailboat needs a rudder and a keel, at least. One to steer and the other to stop the boat from sliding sideways when it's pushed by the wind. I found some discarded furniture pieces and that supplied wood for both. Here I'm screwing the tiller to the rudder. Now a bit of varnish and a few days drying time. I think we're close. The simple centerboard ties in place under the deck. Where else? There's no other place on the boat for it. I added backstay extensions to the pontoons so I could make a longer boom and thus a larger sail. The backstays help hold up the mast. I added spreaders front and back to make the boat more rigid and keep the deck from slipping off the pontoons, which happened when I was rowing vigorously before. To the upper left you can see the yellow sail material and bamboo from another island for the mast and boom. Sails are tricky to get right. I got lucky on my first try. A simple triangle, 4 by 3 meters. Ta-da! Mission successful! At least it looks like a sailboat, actually a catamaran. But does it sail? Maiden voyage number two coming up. Oh my god, does it sail? This little dreamboat flies through the water. My first sailing anything is a huge success. I am so thrilled. I celebrated by sailing the whole day. And the next. And the next. Sailing is so much fun. I wish I had discovered this design as a kid. I mean, a 12-year-old could make this cat. But well, that means catamaran. That's when it hit me. Kids could make these. It knocks down into pieces in minutes and could be carried on a trailer behind a bicycle like uh, we used to carry surfboards in California back in the 60s and 70s. No need to bother mom and dad to take your sailboat on the roof rack. Take it with your bike. Okay, now this is the finished cat. A jib makes a big difference in the way this cat sails, like faster and much more control. This is the final design and it performed beyond my dreams. It was my first sailboat and it's still my favorite. I think kids would love this. Big kids too. The next one, I thought, is going to be better. More flotation, but not bigger. More sail area. Faster. Bigger and more comfortable deck. It should carry two people in comfort. So here's the idea. You pack some food and water, go to a lake, tie on the gear, and disappear for a weekend, or a whole week. Go places nobody's seen. This is something I have to share with others, I thought. It's too much fun to be kept a secret from others. I decided to improve the design and share it with the world when the time was right. Well, world, now's the time. After four months on this beautiful island paradise, I left Brazil and I left my cat too. It's still there if anybody wants to go sailing. Better still, you can make one and sail anytime you want. I've made three more cats since, two from PVC, and I'm building one now based on the original design, which I think could open up sailing to many more people. Rebel Cat 5, it's called. Check it out at my website and tell me what you think. Thank you.